Hi, Willie Mayette from Pianoed Willie. Welcome to this third video on rootless chords. Today we're going to talk about how to practice these rootless chords. So uh, often what I'll hear from students is, you know, they, they understand the rootless chords, they know how to form, you know, some of these rootless chords, but the question typically is, how do I practice all of these chords? Because there could literally be hundreds of them. Right? If you have 12 keys and you have one type of rootless chord, there's 12 right there. But then there's two forms, which I'll talk about in a second. So there's 24 chords just for one type of chord. Then you have minors, then you have majors, it goes on and on and on. So you could have hundreds of chords. So how do you effectively practice them? Now one way is to, you know, just start with your circle of fifths. Take like a major chord. Okay, so I have C major 7, okay. Uh, there's my first form, you can call that A or B, it really doesn't matter which form you're, you're calling it. Okay, so the first form, right, then I go to G, right, I just go around the circle of fifths, then I can go to D, right, then I can go to A, then I can go to E, right, and I can just keep going around my circle of fifths. That's not a bad way to practice, and putting five or ten minutes of your practice uh, time to something like that would be good, okay? What I would suggest that you do though is that you also go backwards in the circle of fifths. So go from C to F to B flat to E flat to A flat, you know, so go backwards in your circle of fifths. So rather than going clockwise, go counterclockwise, all right? You can also go up by half steps, all right? So moving up by half steps, that's another way you could do it. You could do, uh, you know, if you want to like play the root in the left hand so you can hear it, there's C major 7, D, uh, D flat major 7, D major 7, E flat major 7, E, F, right? So moving up in half steps is fine. That's, that's also another way that's good to practice. However, again, you usually don't have the same type of chord moving up in a half step like that, all right? Dominance, yeah. Dominant chords are good to practice by half steps, right? But even still, you don't find that it's always moving by the circle of fifths, right? Uh, circle of fourths, so going backwards in the circle of fifths, that's a little bit more common. So C to F to B flat to E flat to A flat to D flat, that's more common. But still, we still haven't gotten to the way music really you know, functions all of the time. Music doesn't just stay in a half step motion or in a specific intervallic motion. It moves around, doesn't it? Sometimes it goes up a third, down a step, up a fifth, down a fourth, and so on, okay? Because otherwise, songs would always sound like this. You know, like constantly moving around, you know, in the same uh, circle of fourths or, you know, that's going to get boring after a while, right? So, the next thing we could try doing is we could do 2-5-1 progressions. And we can do that around our circle of fifths or circle of fourths. So D minor 7 to G7 to C. Then say I'm going down to F. So G minor 7, C7, F major 7. And then C minor, F7, B flat major 7. Okay? So again, this is moving around my circle of fourths, which is backwards in the circle of fifths, or I can go around circle of fifths as well. So D, G to C, and then A to D to G, right? And, go, and so on, you know, from there. I still don't like that method. And the reason is that, again, like I said, music doesn't just stay in that very formulaic pattern. So one of the best ways I have found for students to practice their chord voicings is to actually apply the chords to a song. Whether or not you play the melody is completely up to you. So in other words, like, let's take that first four measures of Fly Me to the Moon again. So I learned my rootless chord voicing, A minor 7, then I do it on D minor, then I go G7, then I do C, okay? So and now I'm just taking four measures. Work on the first four measures. Now, this is what I call A form, all right, meaning that it's one particular form. It's not the same form every time. So here I have the seventh of the chord on the bottom. Here I have the third of the chord on the bottom. Seventh, on the chord, seventh of the chord on the bottom, third of the chord on the bottom. So now when I go to my B form, all I'm doing is I'm changing that. So rather than putting the seventh on the bottom, I put the third on the bottom. Okay, so now I have three, five, seven, and nine. And then when I go to D minor, I have 7, 9, 3, and 5. When I go to G7, and then C major. Okay, so I have, uh, so, so I'm sorry, A, D, G, C, or A, D, G, C. 
And I could do that along with it. That's oh, right. What am I doing here? And so I could do that form, you know, uh, along with the melody if I want to. I don't have to play it along with the melody, all right? I could just do it just left hand alone or, you know, left uh, the rootless chords in the right hand and then do the root in the left hand. Completely up to you, all right? But the main point to take away from this is apply your rootless chord voicing or whatever chord voicing you're working on to a song right away, okay? So if you want to just practice left hand alone, okay, A minor to D minor to G7 to C, okay? Now, there's something else, and I, I have music on this, so make sure you download the music for this. Something else is that you can also apply it to the blues. The blues is a fantastic vehicle to use for learning chords, right? Because you have a C7, an F7, a lot of times on this one we're going to have an A7, we're going to have a D minor 7, and we're going to have a G7. So we got five different chords right there that we're going to learn with this blues. So what I did was... So I have C7, and you notice I have the same rhythm all of the time. This allows me to do two things at once. So now I'm practicing those rootless chord voicings, but I'm also practicing working on comping rhythms. Da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, all right? A lot of times uh, students will ask, how do I vocalize that da to quarter note? Well, I just go da, ba, and then the ba is the eighth note right after it. So it's Da um, ba, da um, ba, da um, ba. Or you can also go da ah, ba, da ah, ba. All right. So da ah, ba. All right. So anyway, C seven to F seven. Then the other one I have is A seven, D minor seven, and then G seven. Now if I put a, a basic bass line to this, just root five root approach. Okay, then I get something like this. I'm going to play the chords up here. Sorry, I'm going to also do the uh, comping rhythm. I like it better down here. So you can play them up here or down here, it doesn't matter. Right? You can also play them with a backing track and do them in the left hand. Right? So the point though is that we're taking the 12 bar blues, those five different chords that I'm using for my blues, and I'm uh, uh, putting these rootless chord voicings to these blues chords. Right? Makes it a lot easier for me to work through these chords because now I'm getting something that I can actually use. And this is what I'm always trying to impress upon with students is that practicing circle of fifths or half steps, sure, that's fine if you have the time to do that. A lot of students, myself included, you know, our time is press. So I find that when you approach it uh, with a song right away, not only do you get the benefit of getting something different and real, like a real chord progression, not like an exercise chord progression. So you get that real chord progression. You also, though, get the benefit of, hey, guess what? You're learning another song, all right? So you can, you, you know, you can really uh, uh, maximize your practice potential there, okay? So try going through that on a song or on a 12-bar blues or both. And remember, you don't have to play the entire song. Practice it in small sections, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I'll see you soon. Okay, so now, uh, thanks for hanging with me on this lesson. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to register for my free live webinar, okay? I'm going to be doing a live webinar. Uh, uh, the, the, the date will be uh, next to this video and the email along with this video, okay? So make sure that you register for that webinar because I'm going to be going through these techniques, all right? Uh, but I'm going to be doing it live. So I'm going to show you some stuff that I haven't covered in these mini lessons, okay? The webinar is absolutely free. So uh, if you really want to get some more of these ideas under your belt and bring them into your place, 
playing and start to change the way that you generate and build your arrangements, you're definitely going to want to check out the techniques on this webinar. Right? So anyway, uh, fill out the form, you know, click the link, register for the webinar, and I will see you uh, in that live webinar uh, very soon. Okay? Take care.